They're not better than you, and they are not more talented than you. Now, there is a difference, though. <laughs> they probably have better systems, habits, and routines in place to support them on this journey. What's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's your girl, Courage Molina. I am a pastor and a Christian business coach. I help purpose-driven women just like you to build extraordinary faith so that they can take action and courageously level up in their life and in their business so that they can build wealth and leave a legacy of impact. So on this channel, I talk about life, I talk about faith, and I talk about business. If you are about those things, Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification button so that you don't miss all of the amazing videos that I drop every Wednesday and the live stream we do on Saturday. So glad to have you. Have you ever been working on something or working towards something and it seems like everybody else has figured it out but you? Like everyone else has figured out how to do YouTube and social media and the reels and the emails. And so now they're building businesses and they have time for their friends and family and they're building relationships and they're collaborating. It's like, how are they doing all of this? And you are still struggling to show up weekly right? Like how are they doing all of these things and still you haven't managed to finish the program or the product that you wanted to create? How are these people doing all of these things? Well, if you listen to the enemy, he probably has you thinking that they are better than you. That's absolutely not it. They're not better than you and they are not more talented than you. Now, there is a difference though. <laughs> they probably have better systems, habits, and routines in place to support them on this journey. And you just don't know what those tricks are. And so I think we can sometimes overlook the importance of a routine. We can overlook the importance of having a system in place so much so that we think we can just wing it or we'll just figure it out. Or we just don't even take the time to create one or we don't know where to start. Today, I want to share with you uh, four amazing women that I have had the pleasure and the honor of coaching. Maybe you're thinking you don't need to get a system. Maybe you're thinking you don't need a routine or you don't need to change your habits. But I hope that when you hear from these amazing women, at the very least, you will start to understand the importance of having a system, of having good habits and a routine to help support you on your entrepreneurial journey. Let's check it out. Uh, where do I begin? My whole life was a mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think my greatest challenge was uh, probably not knowing who I was. Not knowing where I fit in in the world. Just living day to day blindly. It's a, it's a deep cut of, I just couldn't do it anymore. I was at the point, I just wanted to, I had a toddler and I had a baby and I just wanted to run away. That I just wanted to be done. I couldn't do any of it anymore. But the biggest challenge was, it was just like, I didn't feel like enough at all. And I could literally sit here all day. We could have another whole podcast episode, just have me on Q and A and you guys would get so much from my story from from before to the middle of being the mastermind and to now, but the biggest challenge, I was just like, I'm not enough. I've actually got videos that I took of myself, like video journals on my computer because I was at, like, I needed to talk to somebody at the time. It was just me. I was like, I had no one to talk to but myself. So I look back at those and I, like those videos, like you could just see, I was so drained. And in my voice, I was so desperate. I'm just like, I don't understand. Why does this have to be like, I shouldn't be like this. There was breast milk everywhere. My outfits were just like, I was the frumpiest of frumpy and I like fashion. And it's just like, I completely lost myself. And I, every time I would always go to God and it wasn't like a repenting type. I was always just like over and over again, asking for my salvation over and over again. I remember at one point, my pastor kind of catching on to that and questioning me on it. He's like, it's a one-time deal. God doesn't stop loving you and he doesn't forsake you. You don't need to come ask for yourself. I was always like, well, I'm not good enough though. 
I'm just, I'm not good enough. And I, you know, it made me show up for my kids a certain way. My family, my family did not recognize me. It was so hard for everybody around me at the time. And I just decided I won't be living soon if I don't do something, even if, because at the time my husband was not crazy about handing money over. I used to be a stay at home mom, by the way, everybody. So I had nothing and um, for myself. And my husband was not crazy about giving me the money. And I was like, I don't care if I have to go find a job. I am doing this. So that was my biggest challenge. What happened is that I had just completed Purpose to Platform, where we look at our talents and our purpose and taking it into the marketplace. Um, this ended, you launched, but basically I was left like, what am I going to do now? I have the strategy. I know what I'm supposed to do. And in that program, you were actually one of our accountability coaches. Uh, I was not directly in your group, but I kept poking into <laughs> your group assignments <laughs> and what you would give your, your, your group to do because you'd always give them more. You would stretch them a little more. And for me, I'm that I am that type of individual. I'm a, I'm a high achiever. So I'm always looking for more. And yeah. I needed to have some kind of adjustment, some kind of guidance, some kind of accountability in really bringing everything together, in trying to live my life in what I call a harmonious way with balancing, well, not balancing, harmony between my business and my family. And when you when you sent out the email for the masterclass and I read them like, okay, definitely, because number one, I am stuck with courage like white on rice. So whatever she has, <laughs> I'm going to find a reason why I need it. <laughs> so as as I read, I'm like, yes, I am going to be in this. I'm going to find a way to be in that. And I got on the masterclass on the same night I signed up. The masterclass was on the 12th of December. I signed up on the 12th of December. <laughs> yeah. It's because I really needed the accountability. I love your style of accountability. It is what I needed for my aptitude, for my kind of personality. And what I love more about it is that I love God. You love God. We're in love with God. And the Courageous Living Mastermind has a certain component that helps you build your faith and strengthen your spiritual walk with God. So definitely that was the icing on top of the cake for me. But really coming out of P2P, I just needed the support to bring everything together. I needed the accountability. I needed somebody who had already done it in business to guide me and to give me the tools I needed that I could have been a success. So that was the need I had in particular to enroll in, in the Courageous Living Mastermind. Uh, um be amazing, Aretha, because she and I were in P2P to, together. And when P2P finished, I, just like Aretha was like, okay, I need something else. Courage reached up to me. And she said, you know, I had this conversation with Patrice and, and she and Patrice, they were talking about me. Yeah. It's like, well, what are you going to do with Dion? <laughs> well, Patrice was like, well, I'm thinking she belongs with you. And then Courage was like, I think she belongs with me too. So she reached out to me and I was just like, okay. Because I needed, I needed, I need, I knew I needed community. I didn't know I needed community until I had community. Yeah. Because when you're in community and in the right community, that's key. Then you know how much you can go to that next level. <laughs> for me, what had the most impact for me? Well, two things. But firstly was conquering my calendar. <laughs> I don't miss deadlines. And many persons that I interact with, my clients and personally, they admire this about me. That's something they talk about. Now I keep my schedule. If it's not in my schedule, it don't get done. <laughs> now I do have flexibility there. And I ensure, again, coming back to that harmonious living, you taught us how to color code and ensure that every area of our life was incorporated into our calendar. So my time with my friends, my time for myself, my self-care, my time for house chores, everything gets into the calendar, backed up by alarms. <laughs> Listen, this, this has revolutionized my life. Honestly, this, I feel like a champion just because I'm... I've conquered it. So, so for me, that was the, the biggest thing. It has made me very effective with not just my task, but um, being more productive, 
with what I have assigned to be done with it. And I plan from starting the planning from the month before, breaking down to the week before the reviews. This was, this had the biggest impact on my life. Um, when I look tangibly, that has just honestly revolutionized my life. The other thing for me was the community. I know you asked for one, but I have to give two. <laughs> it was the community. And this is where um, I learned to be again authentically myself and walk in the power of who I really was. Because all along, I was putting on the facade. Even coming to P2P, I only allowed a little bit of me to shine through. I always, you know, you, you when you get in the room, they say you're too bright. You're the one putting the blinders so people don't see you. Yeah. Courageous Living Mastermind had me to come out and be me. Bold, me, amazing me, saying who I am. Doesn't matter who don't like it. Doesn't matter who like it. Knowing my identity in Christ, being a mini God, being the child of the Most High, knowing that how my daddy views me and just walking in that authority backed by that power in accepting myself being myself even the, the the relationships that i formed in there and again dion could look at my face and tell if something was wrong with me even if i tried to hide it even yeah. if nobody knows what i was going through y'all could sense it that's the kind of connection we had in there this hard-minded person people that's where i got my prayer partner listen those friendships those connections to me are so much more valuable than friendships I've even had for my lifetime. Um, when, you, when, when you have your victories, you are celebrated, they shine with you. When you're going through difficulty, and although the coach doesn't want us to do struggles, but you know we all have our down times, yeah. they're right there in the girt with you, praying with you, and not just saying, I will pray for you, but calling you on the phone and praying with you. So for me, the community is really what had me to embrace my authentic self because for too long, for too long, I felt I was too bright <laughs> and kept putting on the demons. But you know what? Right now, I am me. Unapologetically me. If I am too much for you, you put on your sheets. You <laughs> <laughs> but those were the most two impactful things from CLM for me. Uh, one thing that I know that stuck out the most for me, um, and I still keep with me to this day is, uh, we were in, I can't remember like the module that we were in, but it was just a simple question of like, who are you? Right. And you know, I'm, I'm Latrice. You know, very, very surface level, very, very surface level, right? And you pushed us and you was like, no, like, who are you? And it was like, and that was really like, it seems ridiculous, but that was like the first time where I actually dug deep and was like, I'm a creative. You know, I said it out loud. I, I meant it. I explored it. It was frightening and it was very confusing because I was like, I had no idea that I did not know this question or I, I, I never explored the answer to the question, I would say. So every time I um, myself in a weird space, um, I just ask myself, like, who are you? Who are you? Know who you are. Get it done. Because of my sewing and embroidery ability, sewing is such a a non-respected thing with some people, especially people in my family. Let's put it that way. And I am formally educated. I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and I only share that not to boast. I share it because my family would say. You are so educated. Why do you just sew? Or why do you sew for those people? And so they really diminished my sewing ability. It's cute. It's nice. It's not going to make you money. And, you know, I 
ran programs and I was director of, and I mean, I had all the titles. It just, it wasn't hitting. It wasn't make, it wasn't bringing me joy. Sewing brought me joy. Sewing wasn't respected though. So when I came on and I came into Courage's group, she would get on me and, and, and Lydia comes to mind. I don't know if Lydia's watching this, but Lydia would, she's like, stop saying that. No, you just, so you don't just, you know how many people wish they, like, I can't sew on a button. I would love to have that skill. So the community, when I say fine community, they really lifted me up and they helped me to realize that, and there's one particular person, I'll just, I already had a coming to Jesus meeting with her. I, my sister, she would get on me and courage would, I mean, one thing you said, courage, that really just hit home. You said that when I used to speak of my sister, I would physically shrink. Yeah. And that, you remember saying that to me? Yes. And you said I would, now, now mind you, my sister's in a whole other different state. And when I would talk about her in the group, I guess I really did become smaller. And, and like, I guess I did this. I don't know what I did. I don't know what you saw. And it just really hit home. And this community helped me to see that my sewing is a talent. My sewing is a gift. Just because it comes easy to me doesn't give me the right to diminish it. Uh -huh. And that's what courage taught. That was the gift that God, because God does give everybody a gift. And I didn't respect that sewing was my gift because I didn't see it because it came so easy. I'm thinking because I got myself through graduate school because I, I wrote this paper and because you know I did the hard stuff and because my family valued brain power that that was it and they was like mm, no yeah. and so the one thing that you gave me and I'm like Aretha you gave me more than one thing you you gave me the courage and ability to say that I no longer I can't say I no longer I really am mindful of when I say. I just so I, I take that out of my vocabulary. I take the just part out of my vocabulary. I am a sewer and I'm pretty darn good at it. Okay. You know, and also that it's okay to not be in agreement with your family. Yeah. And I no longer shrink to my sister. Actually, I stood up to her while I was in your, your group. I was able to finally tell my sister. You can't talk to me that way anymore. You, you can't do that. And I got that strength from this community. So that's what I wanted to say. That's what I got from you. you know. um, I'm still in the middle, but the amazing thing about where I'm at right now is that I know that I'm not going back. There's no way that I can go back. He won't let me go back. No matter how, if even if I tried. So with the mindset of knowing that I have to keep pushing forward, um, it's great because I wake up every day and I say, God, what would you have me do today? I have a, um, I run a whole uh, creative community. Um, business is doing well. Um, I'm learning every day. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm just, I'm blessed. I am honestly like blessed just to wake up every day and know that I am living in my true purpose. I am doing what I was made to do. And every day I question like, how did I get here? And every day I thank the Lord that I did get there because just like uh, Dion was saying, you know, when you speak to somebody about creating or being a creative, you know, they look at it more as a hobby. And I knew that I needed this to be a lifestyle. I needed it to be a lifestyle because no matter what I do, no matter what job I had, I will always wake up and go to sleep and want to create something. So I knew that um, it being a hobby was just not an option for me. Um, and I'm just thankful that God made a way for me to be doing it full time. Um, 
yeah and and business is just growing like you know like it's 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 just amazing like a uh, freak amazing like so i am well i'm i'm just i don't even know where to start with that question because i'm not the same in any way i don't dress the same i don't talk the same i don't interact with people the same um and the thing is here is that it's even with a lot of the same circumstances you know the same thing that i was up against before is all the same but i am completely different i am you know went from being like which i was very anxious and depressed and things like that and i was so afraid to you know be who i was and always thought that i wasn't enough and went to being like i'm a sex coach now and like it's just you know to go from not having social media at all and then to getting on and starting to talk about sex on social media and in public i'm on track to be in a 200k mastermind next spring i have i work 15 hours a week i my girls don't really go to daycare or anything like that they are home most of the time my husband works a lot uh my house it doesn't always look like a bomb has gone off and i make clean clothes um i have clean dishes it's just like it's just a completely different life like my perspective of everything is just everything is so grounded and so much more playful and curious and bold and it's just let's like everything else behind me just seems like such a such a different life so where am i now woo I'm having the ride of my life, <laughs> living life on my terms, jet setting like I visualized and truly enjoying the freedom of working from a laptop anywhere, having my freedom Fridays and no work on the weekend. So from Friday to Sunday, I'm off. <laughs> I love that. And I'm really loving it. Um, and I'm a life strategist empowering women to live life on their terms to live according to what god has planned for them i am having fun with the clients that i'm working in right with right now it brings me joy i i'm loving it i'm loving it i'm loving it after being in the carriages group and i think it was concurrent that i also joined faith activated so i was doing you guys together right courage yes those two programs like i said helped me to realize that i'm actually pretty darn good at embroidery and, and sewing. And I created a, a an item, I created a product. I took it off the shelf, I updated it, came into the group, shared it with both groups. They said, okay, something you need to, you need to push this a little further. I did, and it got me into a pitch contest. I won the pitch contest and I won $5,000 for my product. And that $5,000 was going to be for research and development to further my product. If anybody out there who knows me, I don't like videos. That's why I told when Courage asked me to do this. Oh, God, I got to be on video. Like, of course you want me on video. <laughs> so, any, so I, I do stuff and I just do it afraid. So don't think, oh, she, that's just a shtick and she's just saying that. No, I really am scared. I just pray to God and just go, okay, give me the words. Let's make it happen. And I just do it afraid. And so I went on stage and I told my story. What I did know that there was someone in the audience, Jamie Kern Lima mm -hmm. was in the audience and she heard my story. Just for the people who haven't Googled Jamie Kern Lima, she recently sold her cosmetic company to L'Oreal for 1.2 B as in billion dollars. Please continue. Jamie Kern Lima got on the stage and said, not only am I going to give her the money for her covers to be shared with daycares and shelters of her choice for the underserved, I'm going to sponsor Dion to go into the mastermind. Hey, hey. How much hey, is the mastermind? Hey. Say it again. How much is the mastermind? $7,500. Okay. So she blessed me with $17,500. Hundred dollars, and I'm just like, wow! I absolutely loved 
watching that video again, just hearing from the ladies talk about how transformational being in Courageous Living Mastermind was, um, hearing the importance and the impact that having a small, intimate community had not only on their mindset, but really and truly every area of their life, from their personal lives to the business, to their confidence, just everything had such a huge impact on every area of their life. That to me is, it's a huge thing because I don't take this work that I get to do lightly. And so it's an honor to play even a small role in the lives of, you know, women who were called to the marketplace. Now, if you think that might be you and you think you might be interested in getting in a program that will change your life, it will help you to create systems and routines to support you on this entrepreneurial journey, then do not wait. I know that it's not open yet. You cannot sign up yet. I only take 10 people. And so what you want to do is get on a call with me. You're going to go to the website bit.ly slash talk to courage, and you're going to book your call today because last cycle only took seven days to sell out. I can't imagine that this cycle is going to be any different. So go ahead and get your calls booked early so that by the time it opens up, you're the first to know. So why wait? All right. Listen, I hope that you now understand the importance of routines and systems and community. As you see here in the My CEO Squad community, we are showing up every Wednesday together, supporting each other, showing up in the chat as TGIW goes on from week to week. And you know that this video is not the last video. So you can head on over to the A&O show as TGIW continues.